All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of Geek with Glasses. In this video, I want to take a few minutes and talk about the iOS 8 and Mac OS X Yosemite integration um, and how the two OSs are going to do and handle some of these handoff features that we talked about and we got to see during WWDC. Um, I am running the iOS 8 Beta 5 on my iPhone 5S and I am also running the Yosemite Dev Preview 5, which was released about a week after the public beta 1 was released to anybody who signed up for that uh, public beta. So uh, let's just jump right into this and uh, demonstrate and see how this works. So here I am, um, I'm on my Mac and I've got Safari open and I'm taking a look at uh, you know some easy geek with glasses reading. So uh, let's say I'm on the YouTube channel and I'm taking a look at the WWDC key note recap video and I decide you know what uh, I want to go watch this outside and uh, you know sit on my deck with a glass of wine and watch this on my I, uh, my iPad you'll notice over here on my iPhone I now have the uh, Safari indicator in the lower left hand corner of my screen so if I go ahead and swipe that up type in my password the iPhone is going to pick directly up off where I left off on my Mac um, and it will work in any of the browsers right so uh, unfortunately I gotta watch this little preview an advertisement before I can get into the video that I actually came to watch, but essentially I can be anywhere um, and pick right up off in for you know my web browsing integration. So if I uh, were to be looking, let's say I had my phone closed and locked, and I was looking at the Google Plus page, same concept. I get that indicator, I swipe up, I put in my password, and it's going to take me directly to the Google Plus page on my iOS device. And this is going to work for your iPads, your iPod Touches, and your iPhones. Um, and the same works in the reverse. So let's say I am on my phone and I am looking, I was watching uh, Homeland a little bit earlier and I was looking up Damian Lewis. And let's say I'm looking up the wiki on Damian Lewis and I want to go to my computer because I actually want to do a little bit more searching than just from my mobile device. You'll see that on my computer when I come over, you know, and I can lock my mobile device, you'll see that on my computer I have this indicator just above my dock. Actually, apparently it has to be opened. Um, yeah, it looks like it has to actually be open and active. You'll see that I have this indicator. I can go ahead and click this indicator showing me that I have a handoff from my iPhone. Click the button and it's going to take me uh, right to the same spot uh, that I was looking at on my mobile device and I can pick up with my web browsing. Now this works for more than just web browsers. It'll also work for the map application. So here we are. I have maps open and I'm actually zoomed in in satellite view and I'm looking at the Apple headquarters out in uh, Cupertino. And again, if my phone is locked, you'll see that I have a map indicator in the lower left hand corner. Go ahead and swipe that up type in my passcode and bam it's going to take me from what I was looking at to a very similar almost exact view of what I was looking at on my computer now on my phone and I can move this around as an example let's say I were to zoom this way out switch this over uh, to the standard map mode and zoom in on downtown San Francisco on the Presidio. Uh, again, here's that map indicator, upper left hand corner, click it and the map application on my Mac is going to emulate that. And again, I can do some even more cool stuff. Let's come over here and uh, let's look at the Transamerica building um, and let's do this in 3D mode. So we're going to bring this up on my uh, on the Mac and we're looking at downtown San Francisco in 3D mode. So let's say I zoomed in and now I'm looking at the Transamerica building and I want to pick this up where I left off on my phone. So I very simply go to the lock screen, get the map, swipe up, type in the password, and bam, it's going to switch over and take me to a similar view, which is really cool. So this is, you know, Apple is making it very easy to go between workstations. Let's say you're sitting at your desk and you're working on something. Um, and you want to get up and uh, go outside or stretch or just take a break and make yourself a cup of coffee, but you want to finish writing the email that you started composing because you had a good thought, you simply swipe up and continue with wherever you were um, on whatever mobile device you're using, whether it be an iPad, an iPod Touch, or an iPhone. So this this is going to work for most of the core Apple apps. So it's going to work for Safari, for Mail, for Maps, and uh, a few of the other applications. Um, which is pretty sweet. I like it a lot. So the next thing I want to talk about is the 
phone integration that you're going to have between iOS devices and your Mac running Yosemite. So um, the way this works is FaceTime. So if you have the FaceTime app logged in on both your Mac as well as your iOS device with the same iCloud account, you can now use your computer the computer speakers and the computer microphone to send and receive phone calls and I'll show you how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unlock my work phone, call myself from my work phone and it takes a second for FaceTime to kick in so my phone will ring first and then all of a sudden I'll get this alert on my computer. So here you will hear there's my phone ringing and bam you'll notice FaceTime launched and I have an indicator here that I'm receiving a phone call from myself. I can decline it, send a message, I can send a reminder or I can go ahead and answer it. So if I hit the answer button, um, the phone picks up and I'm on a phone call. And you can see I get these waveforms, which is really nice. Um, I can mute out the mic and it's going to use whatever mic you have FaceTime configured. So like right now I have my, uh, my Yeti mic configured. So I would be using my Yeti mic to speak to the person who called me and their voice would be coming out of whatever speakers, whether I have headphones or external speakers or if I'm using the built-in speakers on my Mac. Um, if the person who called you is on another iOS device with FaceTime capable, we can very quickly kick over into a FaceTime call and start using, you know, video to, to communicate with that individual. And as you can see here, if I bring up my display for the iPhone, uh, here's that call that has occurred. So I've got my phone call uh, coming across. So I can go ahead and hang up that call. Um, and I'm going to minimize this and the same works in the reverse if I'm on my computer and I need to make a quick phone call So let's say here I am I'm on my computer and I need to call the Apple store um, Because I need to uh, go in and make a new purchase or uh, take a look at the the some some new features that Apple uh, or some new um, accessories that Apple is um, Selling I can very simply go to the Apple store website You'll see that I have a phone number here and you can see that this phone indicator is blue. This would be great out if I didn't have the ability to initiate a call. Um, and it doesn't just work for Apple. I just went here because it's easy to find a phone number. Click the button. FaceTime initiates. I bring up my phone. You'll notice that my phone is going to uh, initiate. So I get an indicator. Do I wish to call that number? Sure. I'm going to hit the call button and bam. You're going to watch my phone is going to initiate a phone call. Whoops. It locked it. There we go and it initiated a call to the Apple Store for me, and I'm using my computer. I'm going to go ahead and hang that up. So I'm using my computer now to make, uh, you know, send and receive those, uh, uh, you know, not send and receive, but make and receive those phone calls. Um, so you have some really cool direct integration, which is really nice. And you obviously, um, you could have your contacts list open. I'm not going to open this up because I'd have to blur a bunch of stuff out and post. But um, I can have my contacts list open and just very simply click on somebody and initiate that call. And then it's very quick to go from using your computer to communicate to the handset. All you do is open up the phone app on your phone from where it's just minimized in the upper bar like you saw a moment ago that green bar on the top all you do is click that and it automatically moves the call from your computer on your phone so you can get up and walk away which is really cool it's going to make um, integration and working for those folks who actually work in an all apple environment this is going to be really cool you know a lot of the dot coms and a lot of startup companies that are out there uh, they buy a lot of apple equipment this is going to make their lives a lot easier which is really really nice and uh, one last thing i want to show you really quickly in this video is a quick preview of iOS, uh, not iOS, but iTunes 12. So we have a whole new layout um, to how iTunes is going to look and feel. Um, as you can see here, the sidebar is gone. I can open this up and I can uh, see different public um, servers that are available to me or as you can see uh, I'm logged in I'm looking at my music collection so I've got all of my music and if I want to view via a different method I switch over here now so I can see artists so I can go to the artist view that we were looking at before and we can see all the artists and we can see all the music that we have or we can click the button and look at genres and so it's going to be a little bit different um, based on the fact that this sidebar is no longer here and you cannot bring it up the way we used to be able to bring it up it's all going to be drop downs over here um, and then we have the same thing we have you know iTunes match we have playlists we have radio we have iTunes store the iTunes store looks pretty cool now and then we have our indicators over here for what it is that we're looking at so if I were to actually go to my media server 
um, and look at all of my uh, content on my media server. So I've got my music here. If I wanted to see the movies that I have available to me, I can see them here. And it's in list mode. Let's go to movie mode. So I got movies that are available. I've got TV shows that are available. And then I've got what is on my phone and the connection to my phone. So um, I will go ahead and blur out that serial number in post. And then I can see all of the other uh, additional stuff um, here that is available with iOS 12. So there you have it. There's a quick look at the, um, the newest applications, if you will, that Apple is putting out. So we took a look at iOS 8 Beta 5. We looked at uh, OS 10 Yosemite Dev Preview 5, and we looked at uh, iTunes 12. So um, I am more than happy to make some more detailed videos on any of these features or any other things that you would like to see with the latest builds uh, of the Apple software. Thanks for watching. As always, like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash geekwithglasses. Uh, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash geekwithglasses. You can hit us up on uh, Google Plus, and uh, you can see us on geekwithglasses.net as well. So thanks for watching. As always, please like and subscribe the videos. It definitely helps the show out, and it shows that uh, you like the content that I'm producing, and I will keep it up. So uh, thanks again, and have a great day. Bye-bye.